Welcome to the Philip on Science series of Science in the Pub talks. Today we're finding out about micro expressions, brief flashes of expressions, how they can help people diagnose depression or other mental illness. These events are part of my mission to get scientists being more creative, get them out, trying things out uh, and, and creating communication that will cut through and appeal and engage on a much wider level than the traditional educational approach that so many people take. And Kira Bai has done just that in this talk. She has given a wonderful uh, personal story but then linked it to some quite profound truths about science as well that she's discovered. It's really quite a lovely analogy that she's drawn. And it's all illustrated with her own quirky hand-drawn pictures. So they're lovely. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about science communication, I'm gonna break her talk down a bit more at the end of this video. Um, and if you're interested in training with me, there are links in the comments below. In the meantime, sit back and give a big round of applause for Kira. Hi, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Kira. My family name is Bai. Sorry, it's not Bai, it's Bai. <laughs> it means Bye. white. Yeah, it's Bai. It means white in Chinese. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about tonight is about me. Three years ago, I suffered from depression. At that time, every day, I asked myself, how did I step by step get into the marsh? I recorded everything that happened in the past, and I saw myself in the most of the scenarios, was standing still and waiting for someone to ask me to do something. At that time, people around me always asked me, you need to do this, you need to do that. Okay, most of the time I followed their requirements, and sometimes when they uh, disagree with each other, I have no idea which side should I stand on. But worst is, no one told me what to do. If no one told me what to do, I can do nothing. Because I was extremely afraid of making any incorrect choices. I, I know it sounds very ridiculous, and it also confused me, because in my memory, when I was a child, I always have my own minds. Even being get in trouble, I still trusted myself, but why everything changed when I grew up? I think it might be because someone told me, if you make any mistakes, you will pay a heavy price. And I've no doubt about it. The best way to avoid any mistakes is to avoid all uncertainties. Follow the instructions from the experienced people don't make your own choice and you won't make any mistakes. It's a perfect logical loop and almost killed me. So I decided to do something to save myself. So I decided back to the school because since I was six years old, I spent the most of my life in the school. Study is relatively um, less uncertainty for me. So I thought it must be a safe choice. But, however, when I studied to my study, I found everything is out of my expected. Um, I studied on the micro-expression recognition. Yeah. So, I did the, I studied on the micro-expression micro recognition assist in the depression detection by artificial intelligence. The micro-expression is a subtle expression that happens when people try to conceal their true emotions. So it may help to discover the real emotion of depression tensions, but it's hard to be recognized. So we use the artificial intelligence to, de to detect it. But whole of my project is based on the psychological theories. My background is not psychological. So more than once, I've asked my supervisor, will these theories be proved wrong in the future? Maybe, my supervisor answered me. <laughs> so um, will some other methodologies show better performance than micro-expression in depression detection? Maybe, 
<laughs> well, something I find my study direction is totally incorrect. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> wow. Welcome to the maybe world. If you ask me, is there a certain link between the micro expression and the depression? I could say uh, we have evidence to prove it, but I can't say 100% yes. So, how do you distinguish the micro expression and the normal expression? Um, theoretically, uh, it's different, but in practical, it's difficult. So, uh, the, this collection spread it widespread to everyone. Uh, high probability that the artificial intelligence will obtain the bios. Uh, we're trying to eliminate the bios, <laughs> but how long will your technique be applied to the real life? I've no idea. <laughs> so, I was used extremely afraid of unknown questions, but now I'm facing unknown every day. I used to be afraid of making mistakes, but the errors accompany with me. My code that was uploaded to the GitHub now even preserved in the Arctic Mountain. That means my bugs will exist for 10,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to be afraid. I used to be afraid of making bad choice, but in the research world, there will be no bad choice. There may be good things or bad things in a story, but there are no good theories or bad theories in a scientific research. So the theories that are now accepted by everyone may be out of date in the future, but out of date theories currently may apply for the future scenarios. And there are gaps between the theories and the reality, so it may lead to leads to the disappointing experimental result, but that doesn't mean all the work is worthless. It might lead papers, guide them to the right directions. So, people expect science to solve the issue, but scientific research created more questions without answer. The things that were most scared me now firmly attract me. <laughs> Scientific research healed my panic and it prompted me to do more exploration. Now today, I've been here, it's also exploration for me because I don't know whether people are interested in how and why I want to do the scientific research. Do people think my experience is boring? Does people disagree with my study attitude? So i eager to know how it will be. And I know from my understanding of Aussie, even they totally disagree with me, they won't jerk me down. So I'll be here. And <laughs> so thanks for listening. Thank you. And Kira. Wasn't that a beautiful talk from Kira? It really touched me. And I love how she she deals with the idea of uncertainty which is such a big part of science and maybe something that a lot of people don't understand they expect scientists to know everything and that's something that you know is really worth discussing with non-scientists who have strong opinions um, what i love about kira's talk is that she's such a natural storyteller she actually pauses well she has little gaps and that's one of the biggest things that I think you need to do. You, it, it's, it's actually a, a, a moment for you to connect with the audience and find what your audience is thinking, where they are and let them felt a bit listened to, which is a very important thing about connection. Um, despite not being a native English speaker, I thought she spoke very well. She enunciated every word beautifully um, and did, did a really good job there. Her drawings were elegant. They really added to the vibe without interfering with it. They complemented it very beautifully. She, she had compassion and humour in the drawings, which matched the compassion and humour in her talk. She also did a really good job with the conversations with her supervisor. The idea that you have a conversation, what do you think? Well, I think this. Really? A little bit of that drama on stage can really help you deliver
those things. Also, she had fabulous microphone technique. So many scientists start gesticulating, move the microphone all over the place, and uh, obviously can't be heard. So stick that microphone right on your mouth, everybody. The only thing that I could possibly find as a critique is that because I happen to know from her slides, she forgot one slide, but I don't think it made a big difference. So great job, Kira, from the University of Canberra. Share, share. If you're interested in working with me on science communication, check out the links below to training courses or come to a pub night and get up on stage. The best thing you can do, the number one thing you can do is practice. Give something a try and uh, you'll get better and better.